Hello there, I'm Thundaga, and welcome to my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. This series will cover all of the essential info you need to make a Pokemon game in RPG Maker and Pokemon Essentials. In this episode, we'll discuss how to set up wild Pokemon on our map. First, we'll look at how to set up wild Pokemon encounters for our map using the debug menu. We'll also set up a couple for different encounter types, such as tall grass and water. Next, we'll look at how to edit the PBS documents directly for our wild encounters. We'll also touch on how to compile all of the PBS changes in our game. With all of that said, let's get into it! So, in the last episode, we made Route 1, and we added some grass here for our wild encounters. I did a little bit of cleaning up though, and I added our tree toppers here to layer 3, and I also moved the grass tiles down to layer 1. The grass tiles here work just fine on layer 1 because they have no transparency and they have grass beneath them. Speaking of grass tiles, let's set it up so that way wild Pokemon will appear on these grass tiles as we walk through them. What makes these grass tiles special is that they have a terrain tag ID set for them, so they're specifically treated as tall grass for the purpose of wild encounters. I'll keep this brief since this is a complicated topic that deserves its own tutorial episode, but if you click on the database button here along the top bar, and then select the tile sets tab, you can start seeing information for all of the tiles across the different tile sets. Our grass tile is near the top here, and if we select the terrain tag button here along the right, we can see the terrain tags of each tile. Our grass tile has a terrain tag of two, which means tall grass. Don't worry about changing anything in here though, this is just to show that the game is treating our grass tiles differently than it's treating all the other tiles. This terrain tag here is the key to triggering our wild encounters. Also worth noting is that water tiles have a terrain tag of 7 and the deep water has a terrain tag of 5. There's a full list of these on the Essentials Docs wiki and I'll be sure to mention that in the description. Anyway, that's boring stuff. Let's boot up our game and get into some cool stuff, shall we? Let's set up some wild Pokemon encounters by using the debug menu. Alright, now that we're in game, let's open up the debug menu by pressing F9. Next, we need to go down and select Information Editors, and then go down and select Edit Wild Encounters. From here, we can edit the encounters for maps that already exist, or we can create a new set of encounters. Let's select Add New Encounter Set, and then select our Route 1 map. Next, it'll bring up an option for Version Number. For Version, let's just use Version 0, because Version 0 is the default set of encounters for that map. We'll go into this in more detail in a later tutorial, but just know that defining different versions would allow you to switch the encounters that appear on your map. This way, it would be possible, for example, to have the wild Pokemon encounters change as you progress further into the game. That can be a little complicated though, so let's just go with version 0 for now. Alright, so now let's hit enter, and here we go! Our Route 1 encounter set has been created. There is another Route 1 that exists, but you can tell that this one is ours because it's Map ID 32. This encounter set is empty though, so let's select it, and then hit Edit. From here, you can see the ID and the version again, so this is Map ID 32, our Route 1, and it's version 0. Underneath though, we can select Add New Encounter Type, so let's just go down and do that. There are a lot of different encounter types to go through here, but I'll do my best to go through them and give each of them a quick summary. For Bug Contest, this is to use if your game has a bug contest. I've personally never really used this one. Next is Cave. This is used for cave maps. Use this if you want wild Pokemon to show up on every ground tile as you walk around. Then underneath, there are Cave Afternoon and Cave Day and Cave Evening and so on. These are based on your PC's internal clock. If you want, you can define different encounters to show up at different times of the day this way. If the internal clock does not match the specified time of day, it will default back to the standard cave encounters, as long as those are defined. This way, you could define standard cave encounters, as well as cave night, and then the standard cave encounters will appear when it's not nighttime, and cave night will appear when it is nighttime. This way, you don't have to specify encounters for every single time window if you don't want to. Next is Good Rod. Good Rod, as well as Old Rod and Super Rod, are the encounters that'll show up when you're fishing using that fishing rod. Next is Headbutt High and Headbutt Low. When headbutting a tree, these are the encounters that can appear. Headbutt High has a higher chance of appearing, and Headbutt Low is the lower chance of appearing. To be honest, I've never really used these. And next is Land. This is the standard encounter type that we'll be using on our Route 1. This is for wild encounters in our tall grass. Just like Cave, it also has different time of day settings. Next is Rock Smash. These are Pokemon that can appear when you smash a rock with Rock Smash. Pretty self-explanatory, right? 
And after that is water. These are wild encounters that can appear when you're surfing on water. These also have time of day options if you want to use those. It is also possible to define new encounter types, but that's pretty complicated and we'll cover that in a later tutorial. For now though, let's just go up and select land. From here, we can set the step chance, change the encounter type, or select add new slot to add wild Pokemon encounters to our map. The step chance is the percentage chance that a wild Pokemon will appear when you take a step in the grass. I'm personally a fan of slightly lower chances, so let's change this to be a lower value, something like 10%. As an important note, the debug menu here says 0 to 255, but 100 is really the highest value you need. Setting this to 100 will make wild Pokemon encounters trigger on every step, and setting this to 10 will make every step have a 10% chance of a wild encounter triggering. Now, let's go down and select Add New Slot to begin choosing wild Pokemon to appear on our map. The first value here, Probability, is the weighted chance that this Pokemon will appear when an encounter starts. If that sounds complicated, don't worry, we'll break down the math a little bit later in this tutorial. The basic idea though is that when multiple Pokemon are added to our encounter set, each of their probabilities are used in the calculation to decide which Pokemon appears. For our example though, let's just give this first Pokemon a probability of say 30. Next is the species. As you can probably tell, this is the Pokemon that will appear. Since this is Route 1, let's add some standard Route 1 Pokemon like Rattata, which is ID 19. Let's scroll on down there and select it. As a reminder, you can press A and S to quickly scroll up and down through these lists. Next, we can set the minimum and maximum level that our Pokemon can appear at. Since this is just Route 1, let's make these pretty low. I'm thinking minimum level 1 and maximum level 4. This way, our Rattata can spawn anywhere in that level range, so we could see level 1, 2, 3, or 4. Now, let's back out with the escape key and look at our encounter set so far. Looks like we've just got our Rattata, but we should add some more Pokemon in here too. To make things easier, what we could do is select the Rattata and select Copy. Now we have two entries in the list, but both of them are Rattata. This is easy enough to change though, we can just select our second Rattata definition here and then go to Edit. Let's make this second encounter a Pidgey, because that's also another good Route 1 Pokemon. We can also raise the probability here a little bit. Let's go with something like 40, so that way Pidgey are a little bit more common. And last but not least, let's add a rare encounter to the map. I'm thinking we could add a Pikachu. First, let's copy our Pidgey, and then select Edit. Since this is going to be a rarer encounter, let's lower that probability down to 10. And then, for our species, Let's scroll on down and select Pikachu. I'm thinking this Pikachu could show up at a higher level range also, so let's raise that minimum level to three and raise the maximum level to five. So if we run into a Pikachu, it'll be a higher level. And there we go. I think this is looking pretty good so far for our first route. Now, real quick, let's break down the math of these weighted odds like I mentioned earlier. Rattata has a probability value of 30, Pidgey has a probability value of 40, and Pikachu has a probability value of 10. With all of the numbers combined, 30 plus 40 plus 10, we have a total value of 80. Rattata's chance of appearing in a battle is 30 over 80, or 3 over 8, which is 37.5%. Pidgey has a chance of 40 over 80, which is 4 over 8, or 50%. And lastly, Pikachu has a value of 10 over 80, or 1 over 8, which is 12.5%. All right, let's add one more encounter type real quick, and then we can test it out in game. Each map can have multiple encounter types defined, and I'd like to add a water encounter on our route one. We can actually add the water to the route in a few as well after we define the new encounter type. So let's go back and then select add new encounter type. I'm gonna press S a couple times to scroll down really quickly and then select water. Water has a step chance of 2% by default, which is really low, so for testing purposes, let's crank this up to something crazy, like 30%. And for our wild slot, I'm thinking let's just add a single Pokemon this time. I'm thinking it would be funny, for testing purposes, if we only had Gyarados appear here. Since we only have one entry, the probability value doesn't really matter because this is just going to be 20 over 20, so 100%. Then for species, let's go down and select Gyarados which is Pokemon ID 130, so I gotta press S a couple times, and then there we go, there's Gyarados. Then, for the level, just for fun, let's crank these up as well. I'm thinking, let's make it a crazy high level, like 45 to 55. This is gonna be a really scary pond here on Route 1. Trainers are gonna need to watch out. All right, if we back out from here, we can see that our Route 1 has a land encounter type defined, 
with three Pokemon entries inside, and a water encounter type with one entry inside. If we back out again, and then back out from there, it'll ask us if we want to save our changes, to which we say yes. When doing that, you'll notice in the debug console here that encounters.txt was just written to. There are still a couple things that we need to do before our wild Pokemon will start appearing though. Wild Pokemon encounters won't ever trigger if we don't have Pokemon ourselves. So let's use some debug and give ourselves a Pokemon. To do this, from the debug menu, you can go and select Pokemon options. From here, you can choose Add Pokemon to give yourself a single Pokemon, or select Give Demo Party to give yourself an entire party of Pokemon. I want to have a full team for the purpose of testing, so let's use Give Demo Party to give ourselves the Demo Party. This fills the party with six Pokemon, which are all level 20 and have nearly all of the HM moves. I'll open up the Pokemon menu right here, and we'll see this is our Demo Party. When walking through the grass though, we still won't see our wild encounters. So what gives? This is because we made changes to our PBS data, but we haven't yet compiled those changes. PBS data changes need to be compiled before they can be seen in-game. To compile data, there are two methods. Option 1 is from the debug menu. If you open up the debug menu and go down to Other Options, and then go down to Compile Data and select this, you can force all of the data files to compile again. This can take a little bit, but you can view the console output log to track its progress. And there we go, now it's done! After doing this though, we still won't see the wild encounters because the game needs to be closed and reopened with the compiled data in order for the changes to apply. So let's close out the game. While we're here, we can talk about the second option for compiling data, which is my preferred way of compiling data. When going up and starting a playtest, we can hold down the left control key on the keyboard, and this will start a full compile as well. Just like before, the progress of this process can be seen in the debug console window. I use this all the time, and it's honestly just become a habit of mine to basically always hold down left control when I'm booting the game. This isn't necessary to do if you don't make any PBS changes as a heads up, but I've just gotten used to holding left control all the time. All right, now let's test out our encounters in game. We've got our demo party and we're ready to walk in the grass. Each grass tile has a 10% chance of spawning an encounter. Oh, hey, there we go. Let's see what we've got. Hey, we got good luck. It's a level four Pikachu. Right on, that one only has a 10% chance, or I guess a 12% chance of showing up. Let's run from this battle, and let's see if we can encounter some more wild Pokemon here in our grass. What else could we run into? Let's see. Are the odds in our favor? Oh my goodness, a level three Pikachu this time. We're insanely lucky, oh my goodness. 12% on top of 12%? God dang. If I run into a shiny here, then that would be something crazy. All right, here we go, a level four Rattata. As you can see, it looks like it loaded all of our encounters that we set up earlier. That's pretty awesome, huh? There are still a couple things that we need to look into though. First off, let's add some water to our Route 1 and encounter a Gyarados. Let's close the game and let's get to mapping a little bit. Adding our water is going to be really easy through the use of auto tiles. I'll explain more about these in a future tutorial, but the basic idea is that our water auto tile can auto format to look nice based on the adjacent tiles. If we select this water tile here from the top of our tile set, and then go to layer 2, and begin painting a little pond, we can notice that the dirt border around the water is adjusting to match the shape of the pond. There are a lot of magical things that can be done with auto tiles, but they're so magical that they deserve their own deep dive in a later episode. For now though, I'm pretty happy with this little pond we've got here. Now we can hit play to get back into the game, let's save real quick, and then Let's go approach that pond. Since we're in debug mode, our character always has access to Surf. We do have that Gyarados from the demo party that has Surf as well, so to prove a point, I'm gonna delete it. To do this, we can open up the Pokemon party screen, and then scroll down to Gyarados here. Then we can go and select Debug, and then go to the very bottom of the list and select Delete. Am I sure I wanna delete Gyarados? Oh yes I am. I can always catch another on this route anyway, and it'll probably be a higher level. It's worth noting that there are a lot of other cool options here in the Pokemon debug menu, so I recommend playing around with those sometime. All right, Gyarados is gone, but we're still in debug mode, so let's interact with our water, and let's select yes to surf. And would you look at that, we're surfing. Now let's move around the water here and see if we can encounter a Gyarados. Oh my goodness, what's this? Oh my gosh, that's a really high level Gyarados. I gotta get out of here. All right, whew. Oh my gosh, let me get the heck out of there. All right, now that was pretty fun, and I think that was a good way to show off different encounters. 
Before we can end though, I want to show you where the encounter's PBS data lives and how to edit it even faster. To access the PBS data, go into your game's root folder, and then go into the PBS folder. From here, you can see where a lot of data is defined, but for now, we just want to open up encounters.txt. This file contains the definitions for all of the wild encounters for the game, including our recently defined encounters on Route 1. As an important note, the name of the map doesn't really matter here, because the encounters are based instead on the map ID. Looking at the defined encounters here, there is already a Route 1 that came with the base essentials maps, but that one is map ID 5. We made our own map that shares the same name, Route 1, but our map is ID 32. To see your map's ID at any time, you can look in the bottom right corner of the RPG Maker window, or right-click the map in the map list and view its properties. If I use Ctrl F and then search for Route 1, I can find all of the definitions, including ours that we recently added. I'm using Notepad++ here, by the way. It's my preferred program for editing PBS files. A download link for this will be in the description. To change the theme of Notepad++, you can go up to Settings and Style Configurator. I've got the theme Ruby Blue. I like this one because it's easier on my eyes. It's almost like Notepad Dark Mode. Going back to the encounter definitions, let's break down all the values that go into an entry here. First is our map ID in brackets, so 032 is map 32. Next is a pound sign, followed by the map's name. Then underneath is each encounter type. You see here we have land with the step chance of 10 and water with the step chance of 30. In each encounter are all of the entries, so we can see the probability value, the species, and then the min level and max level. Worth noting, the species needs to be all capital letters. I'm showing you all of this because I find it so much easier to edit encounters here from the text file. For example, we could go into our Route 1 land encounters and mess around with stuff. We could make that first encounter something crazy like a Lugia, and we could give it a really high level range like 60 to 70, and we could really quickly change the probability here to be like 25, and then we could make this Pidgey something crazy as well, like friggin' Zapdos. We could give that a different level range, like, I don't know, 45 to 55, like our Gyarados has. We could update that possibility as well to be 25, and then we could go really crazy and go like Rayquaza or something as the final definition, and we could just make this show up at level 100. Worth noting is if you don't have a min level and max level defined, if you just have one value here, the Pokemon will always appear at that level, so we've got a level 100 Rayquaza here on our first route. We could lower that to, or I guess increase the possibility of that to 25 as well. And that is so much faster, i found, than going through the debug menu. I'm just a fan of editing it all through text here. Now, let's test these changes out. Since we made these changes directly through the text file, we need to make sure that we compile them. And to compile them, hey, we talked about that a little bit ago, Let's press playtest and then hold left control on the keyboard. And look at that, it's starting a full compile there in the console output. So pretty soon we'll be able to test out all of those changes in game. Using this method, we can make so many quick edits to our encounters and test them out so fast. I love how fast the turnaround here is. It's really awesome. All right, now let's get into the game and walk around in the grass tiles and see some of these crazy encounters we just defined. What are we gonna run into? Oh my goodness, it's a level 100 Rayquaza on Route 1. Holy moly. That is very scary. Oh, <laughs> we need to get the heck out of here. Thankfully, if you hold left control and select run, you can do debug run, which always succeeds. Oh my goodness, I'm pretty sure I needed that to survive. <laughs> anyway, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you for sticking it out with me through episode 3. To access my tutorial website, please check the link in the video description. As a reminder, this tutorial is for Pokemon Essentials V20, so if a newer version is released in the future, such as V21, it is possible that the layout or names of some debugs or files will be changed. In general though, this series should get you where you need to go when it comes to making your own Pokemon fan game. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something, and I hope you have a good one. Remember to like and subscribe for more tutorials in the future. Bye now!